hi <laughs> it's been a while since i've made a live video on instagram or on any other platform facebook youtube and it's just it's cloudy <laughs> cloudy weather today so i thought i'll just do a casual casual um video um with things that have been going on lately in my personal life i mean personal business life in a way with my water business and if any of you have questions please please ask me i'll answer them if i can thank you to everyone who's joining and first of all i would like to say a big thank you to every single one of you who bought my book recently and who supported that project if you don't know what i'm talking about you're just dropping in this live video i recently well kind of recently a few months ago i published uh, my book basil and the worlds of colors which is um, a children's book but i think it can be enjoyed by um, by adults as well which is very important in my opinion um, so yeah that project that book so has seen the light of day thanks to my um, supporters on buy me a coffee if you don't know about the website do check it out it's a very good platform it's kind of in a way similar to patreon but i think it's much better it just feels more casual basically the platform is like what, what's it about is um, anyone who wants to support someone they can do it there they can tip someone so what i did was um i um wrote a little bit about my uh, story what i wanted to do and several of you were really gracious to help me and basically donate coffees <laughs> i don't drink much coffee so all those coffees went into making the book and i'm, I'm i was quite astonished of the support I received on there and yeah it's just I did not expect that much support <laughs> it was very touching um, so yeah everyone who supported me their name your name is in, is in the book at the end of the acknowledgments so um, thank you thank you again uh, that was a wonderful and memorable experience pretty much unforgettable um so um yeah what else i wanted to speak to you about is in case there's any maybe independent authors or writers who are thinking to do markets with their books and perhaps you have a book published or several or you're thinking to publish and you want to know certain things i've recently done a farmer's market was my first uh, farmer's market um, it was a very interesting experience that I would like to talk to you about um, I did it just before my birthday a few days well at the beginning of March it was on the 5th of March um, I currently live in Manchester in case you don't know and this um, market is a monthly market it takes place um, each Saturday um, on the first first Saturday of um of the month um so yeah it's a farmer's market several people producers come with their um, with um, their produce there um at the road hall it's a beautiful estate um, house that has gardens as well with the uh, old barns and that's basically where we had our stuff and um what i had to do to do that first of all why i chose that place because it's an hour an hour drive by car um, from where i live and i chose it because um in 2020 before the pandemic at the end of february 2020 we went there to see the gardens um i encountered the video on youtube about the the bluebells i think it was or the snow no it was about the snowdrop walk they do um, and I love the area, they have some lakes, so basically we went there and they have some beautiful plants uh, called, well, some beautiful 
bushes called Daphne Boulois, uh, jo Josephine Pastille, I think something like that called. They smell absolutely, absolutely magnificent. So I just wanted to go back there again, but because of the pandemic, it wasn't really doable for a while. So finally, um, this year, I decided to do it. I thought it was a uh, good event where I could kind of celebrate in a way my new book and it would be nice to see how people physically react to it and to my other books. So I booked a stall. The stall, in case you're interested, was uh, I think about 45 pounds um, and basically for that they give you a table uh, where you can lay all your produce in my case books and um, so yeah I, I got prepared in advance for it which I think was very helpful um, one of the things I would say was really useful was having a card machine a card yeah card machine application um, we got uh, a Z of one which will have worked very nicely it was the first time we used it so I was a bit anxious of course <laughs> about how it was going to work but it was very simple and it's a small device um, yeah I prepared in advance I put the prices for each books um, because I had five books with me I mean five individual books individual stories and yeah I had different uh, several copies for each of them of course so yeah I had the prices on, on the device for each of them so anytime someone wanted one I just selected it and if they wanted to pay card if they wanted to pay cash yeah, it was different but yeah if you're thinking to do a market I would advise you to to give both options both card and cash because the first person who bought the book um, at my my event there, they wanted to, uh, she wanted to pay by card. So if I didn't give that option, perhaps uh, she wouldn't have bought the book because maybe she didn't carry cash with her. So it's very very important. Um, I uh, I had uh, in terms of display, I basically, as I said, I had five different books. I had for the new book. Um, some coloring pages with one of the illustrations in the book. Uh, the book has an activity section at the end and the activity section contains partly uh, seven pages, individual pages with seven different illustrations that anyone can color in. So they're black and white and can, they can even be framed afterwards because one side is white and the other one the front has the image and the back is white so you can frame it without losing anything and um, the other side of the activity section is uh, about writing your story if you want um, just to have a go at the writing about an experience or you know writing a funny story whatever just uh, giving very brief advice about how to write some things um, so so yeah, I had like individual uh, copies of that page, which is actually the front cover image, but it's just black and white, so anyone can put their own interpretation on the dragon and on the character. And yeah, I had individual pages of that one, and on the back, that had uh, information about. Um, so it had briefly the blur we had the blurb of the book. Um, and information about where they can find me on Instagram. I didn't have business cards. I'm not a fan of that. I think what I will do is either uh, I'll create bookmarks or continue carry on to have this kind of um, black and white pages because I think they're more useful. It's something for kids to play. Um, I had lots of people who took um, pages. <laughs> I had a lady, I think she took like three or four pages at all I'll give them to my grandchildren <laughs> it was quite funny um so yeah if you print more if you're thinking to do that print have have plenty because they're not that expensive to have uh, to make and um, 
yeah it's just something fun it doesn't cost that much to print and it, it just it's something to interact with people and tell them about it helps to tell others about the book um yeah i, I think it was a very good idea if i didn't have those i think uh, because there were lots of people who were passing by the table or stopping by and they were saying very nice things about the books but they didn't buy copies not everyone of course most of them probably didn't buy copies but they did pick up those pages so instead of picking a business card which might end up in the rubbish bin or who knows where if it's just a business card, a business card that has just my information um, might not be that useful for someone but if it's a coloring page and you have a child i think people are more inclined to take those um so yeah very very happy that i did that um i had uh, on the table i had on the on display the prices for each book so the people in case many people are shy to ask for example if i go to a market i don't want to go and have to ask the producer oh how much is that how much is that product how much is the other one it's just annoying for both the customer and the producer i think and many people won't even go and ask if if there is no prices they just won't ask and won't, won't approach because they're shy and it's totally understandable so i made sure i had a, the title of the books and the prices printed largely i mean i think it was like um, 16 font or something like that um so they could see the prices well obviously not from big distance they had to approach the table but yeah it was visible so that was very important um, and then I had uh, the tape with the books um, on display and then another thing that I thought was extremely helpful um, was having um, by the way thank you to everyone who's joining <laughs> I hope you find this useful in some way um, so yeah one of the bigger things that I, I think was alongside with having a card reader was um, I had um, colorful bags to put um, the books in so I had reusable bags initially I was thinking to buy some wrapping paper uh, to put the books in but then I realized that would be really stupid because if I take wrapping paper and I have to wrap old books and sign them and talk to the people uh, asking if they want the books signed for a specific person i need to ask them for their name making sure i inscribe the name correctly so i thought buying bags makes much more sense because it's, it takes seconds to put the books in a bag than wrapping and wasting maybe seller tape or all that uh, and having scissors that would have been a mess so yeah that was not a good idea so i i was looking on, online for bags and luckily I um, I found some colorful bags that um, initially I was thinking like paper bags but I wasn't really thrilled about that idea because in case of rain you know the weather might change very quickly and if it, it's raining the books might get ruined so I found some reusable bags and I think they were perfect because they work very well with the theme of my book in a way uh, because my book is about colors and I thought because these these bags come i think in like six colors and even more i don't know they have like blue orange yellow green pink and red so very colorful they look very nice and they just fit my biggest book which is my latest book my hardcover um if i put it like on the longest side in the bag it fits perfectly but if i want to put two copies they don't fit so i have to turn them like have them in portrait mode not landscape on the side so they're kind of sticking out outside a bit but it wasn't too bad it was just a tiny bit sticking out from the bag and i think they work perfectly because this way you could fit more books as well so either way it, it worked really nice i was just really happy because um my partner was taking um, payments i was uh, speaking with the customers and uh, or maybe they weren't customers but they were inquiring about the books and i was answering what the story was about how copy how many copies they wanted and i was just 
signing the books and then putting them in the bags. I also had stickers which said thank you for supporting my small business. Sometimes I forgot to stick the, those onto the onto the bag, but it was fine because um, they're not such an important thing. And because if they paid by card, I also had a little message that was printing on the receipt that said some, something similar, thank you for supporting an indie author, something along along those lines. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite pleased with how the first market went, although obviously I would have liked if uh, I sold, if I had sold more books. Um, I had plenty books left, but um, yeah, it was, it was very nice finally being surrounded by more people but in a way it was kind of like safe because you they weren't like i was behind the table um it wasn't like it was super crowded it was busy i was i was a bit worried actually when we first arrived because our store was in one in one of the smaller barns and i thought oh my god we're a bit away from the main market um from the main place where the market is taking place and i thought oh who knows how many people are gonna come but there were like there was a constant flow of people coming in uh, and there were lots of dogs i was like wow <laughs> it was so funny because it was it was a sunny day but it was quite chilly and l luckily we were dressed properly we weren't cold but it was still quite chilly and all the dogs they were like some of them were like carried on in some co cozy things it was quite funny and it was delightful to, to see all these animals being cared, cared for so much by their owners. Um, so yeah, um, another thing I would say about doing a market, when you have your table, your stall, make sure um, you have like, um, oh, what's the word for that, basically like a tablecloth, because uh, that it needs to be long enough so it's covering the underneath of the table because you might have several boxes with things on there and it looks a bit so-so if people can see it from the other side so make sure the front of your table is covered with a tablecloth um, what I did I had a, had a tablecloth made of paper I wanted to buy one that's uh, used for a picnic but they didn't have the one I wanted and I didn't want to buy one just for the sake of it because the other ones they had were super busy. They were nice designs but not for my use. I wanted to buy a plain yellow one and they didn't have it so uh, they said they won't have it in time for the mark to send it to me and I'm still waiting for that to become available because I want to have it for uh, for future markets or it's just it's dual purpose i can take it for picnics when i'm hiking or i can use it for a well, when going to the beach or anywhere and can have it as a tablecloth and one thing i would say because i've seen other people with tablecloths and you know i've checked out other people's stalls in preparation for my own event and um, i noticed like i mean i wouldn't say exactly what i noticed but what i would advise is make sure um, you buy a cloth that's not in a color that's not clashing with your products so for example if you have say um, well white is a preferred choice by many people but for example if you have books with white covers they might clash with a white tablecloth and they might not be as visible um, it's same with black. If you have a black tablecloth and your books have a lot of black on their covers, they might just kind of get lost in there. You, they might not be as easy to be seen. So what I was thinking, I was like, oh, I'm going to have a yellow tablecloth, plain yellow. Um, I looked at this website. They have, um, which by the way, if you want to check it out, it's back matte, I think it's pronounced by robust robust stuff i think it's called and uh, yeah i thought that would go very well for my products because my books have yellow and blue um but the way there is yellow is not on the outside um, i mean 
on the edges so it wouldn't clash with the actual tablecloth it would be i think it would be uh, working together well the color scheme that was my thinking oh we'll see we'll see how it will go when i purchase that in the coming weeks but yeah that's just an, an advice i would give you make sure whatever tablecloth you you buy the design the color doesn't clash with your own products because you want to make your products to be as easy to be seen um, so you don't want to put problems in your own way you know um, so yeah what else uh, should I say oh lots of people joining in um, I would say it was quite nice to see the reactions from people I had pleasant reactions and I had, I think, one unpleasant somewhat reaction. Uh, someone mentioned that my book title is spelled wrong, which is not because it's uh, so it's based uh, based on the words of colors, and colors is spelled without an U, but that's the American version. <laughs> so the American English in British English, obviously, we have an U. And I did mention that to the lady, but she was like, oh, you're teaching children wrong. And I was like, oh, sorry, I'm not teaching children wrong. It's just the American version. I wasn't able to print books in both versions of the language. But yeah, I don't think she was going to buy, buy the book anyway. But it was still something to be learned from because she just said, oh, your book is spelled wrong. And I was... I instantly said no it's the american spelling and i think i could have handled that better i could have said oh sorry for the misunderstanding uh, it's just the american english version of the book because i wasn't able to print both of them so i don't think i think that would have worked better it would have been handled better but yeah uh, in general people were really kind they were um, just quite lovely lots of them approached the table and they, they were like oh look at that dragon looks really nice uh, and um, I had a, a girl who uh, lots of people were kind of like shy to like open the books and look at them I and mean, I, I, I had to tell them like oh if you want to know about what the book is you can either ask me or look on the back of the book because it has the blurb and then you can ask me more questions if you want and they didn't know, oh, I can look through the book. <laughs> I was like, yes, of course, it's there on display, of course. Because um, I put, like, you could see, there was one for each book you could open. But maybe I should have, what I should have done, because that would have made it much clear, uh, much more clear, was to, to have perhaps the bigger book, the latest book, to have it opened, to have one copy closed and one open, so they could see it's open, basically you can flip through it. That would have been probably helpful um, they would have encouraged them to just flip through it and they wouldn't be hesitant um, but yeah most people approached and they looked through the books looked at the images and the illustrations I explained to them that uh, they uh, were done by different artists except the two of the books that were made by um, had the illustrations made by the same artist Benja Hughes who did my latest book and uh, yeah what what I liked it was uh, the most was one gentleman who commented he said he just walked past and he looked at the, the stall and he said oh it's nice to see something different here because I think in general uh, at this uh, estate they see like food stalls uh, maybe some glass uh, work um, perhaps um, stuff for the kitchen you know like aprons which is really nice but I guess if people see the same producers over and over again it makes it a bit you know they want a bit more variety and it's it's always nice to see something different when you go to uh, a regular place um, have the same things you're expecting to see there so you can buy them but in case you want uh, for example, there was this um, gentleman who is selling uh, f French soaps, who, uh, which are made naturally. Um, and I, I bought three. I was lucky to catch him just before he left. Um, uh, he was packing up um, and I bought some because they're naturally made and I think they're very useful. Um, the, bet the less waste we make, the better, in my opinion. 
so yeah, it was nice to hear that the uh, older gentleman commenting and saying that it's nice to see something different. And there was another girl who made a really nice comment. She was, she picked uh, Basil, the Basil book, and she looked through it. And I, w I was looking at her because I saw she was like just reading, so she wouldn't feel like oh, I'm staring at her. Um, I I noticed she was reading because you can tell some people are just flipping through the book, some are reading, and she read like three pages, I think. One, two, yeah, because I have like the front page, back page, and then there's an illustration, and uh, the next page has text again. So she read, she she scanned the pages, and I could see she was reading, and she told her mother like, oh mom, this is actually a really nice book, <laughs> nice story, I think she said, and which, you know, it's always lovely to hear. <laughs> that was one of the main reasons I wanted to do the market, I wanted to see how people react especially to the new book, but to the older books as well. But yeah, especially to, to the latest one, because you know, it's the latest book, you always want to <laughs> know um, how it's doing. Um, so yeah, it was a good experience, very, very interesting. The, the lady who who runs the Instagram for Road Hall, she uh, came briefly, Charlotte, if you all see this, uh, it was lovely meeting you. Uh, she came briefly and to to check out. I think she was there to to take pictures to promote the page as well. Um, so yeah, it was nice chatting to her a bit. And um, one other thing that I would mention, for me personally as an indie author, it was really quick to set up and very quick to uh, like at the end to pack everything and go. Uh, it was like. I did. I think it took us like 30 minutes. Maybe we arrived there at around eight o'clock, and the market opened. I think at nine. Yeah, something like that. And um, but we, I was ready before I prepared at home how it's gonna set up the table. Which in the end it wasn't quite like that because I was planning to put um, the bags, the colorful bags filled with books, some of the books on the table. But the, the table didn't look very sturdy. I mean, it was fine, it was okay. But I didn't want to put too much on it in case it was going to break. So I put, I kept the, just one bag and the rest, uh, they were just in the, uh, in the packing stuff underneath the table. But I think it would have looked much better with the bags on top. Uh, because with all the different colors, uh, would have, it would have made the display much nicer. Uh, more attractive and it also would also give people an idea that if they buy a book in case they don't have where to put it they knew it was coming with a bag because it was a nice surprise when I handed them the books uh, and they saw that it's coming with a bag they said, oh I didn't know it comes with this so it's very I was very happy that I about the bags uh, that it's a little thing but it's very useful makes the uh, things more efficient and I also I asked the the main lady who I think she um, is part of one of the owners maybe who, um, of the estate and I asked her if she could provide me with a pot with a flower because I knew she has some in the in the um, greenhouse and she very kindly left on the table for me that had my name on she left a paper white um, pot and um, flower pot and it had some maybe plum blooms in there I don't know exactly what they were but it were very pretty and I think it made the display very look very cute you can see in the pictures on my Instagram um, if you have any questions please let me know um, so yeah that that thing with the packing because I was obviously it's, I've never done the market I've done signed events and stuff like that but I've never done one where there's more producers so it's always anxiety you know <laughs> and because i didn't know where the table was going to be i didn't know how many people were going to come where will be so it's just it, but it was it was nice um there were three other producers in the same room as me um and yeah um outside there were several several because in total they normally come like 60 apparently around over 60 producers um, so yeah and I was very like we packed very quickly we put the books in the in the in the suitcase and in the packaging we had brought and um, 
yeah, it was very, oh yeah, I also had, um, you can see in the picture, I had um, basically like a um, blackboard, it was an A4 blackboard, uh, and it's it was written, um, signed by the author, so yeah, all these things together, I think it helped people see what it was about, and they didn't have to ask too many questions, they just looked through, and they said, oh, I want this book and that book, and if they required knowing more things about the stories they would ask me but yeah in general i think it was the display was pretty straightforward they didn't have any uncertainties um yeah it was just that thing with the the word color because it's the american english not the british english um and the reason why i did this because maybe some of you might be wondering is because lots of um friends who are in america friends of mine who are uh, in America and I got in touch thanks to this um, this project so yeah they're Americans and I just thought yeah I might do the spelling the American way um, because they inspired this book a lot um, if you haven't read the book you'll know what I mean if you read the book uh, I've written about that um, the, the inspiration it's behind the story and why I named uh, the character Basil, um, what were some of the other titles for the story initially. Um, <coughs> so yeah, I just, um, yeah, these are some of the things I wanted to mention. If you have any questions, please let me know. Oh, one more thing I would like to mention before I go. Uh, maybe you've seen this as well. Um, I hope I'm not feeling spammy for people but you know this is my business this is my love livelihood so i have to promote myself as an independent author and um, yeah recently I've, I've i was thinking because it might be the first year after a very long time one will have one will finally maybe fingers crossed will have a garden we currently live in a flat in manchester and it's it's a nice flat i'm not complaining about that it uh, has beautiful big windows they allow for a lot of natural light to come through uh, it's just we don't have a garden so if we want to grow stuff <laughs> just basic stuff like parsley or tomatoes and cucumbers or you know herbs basil <laughs> you know um we, we don't have for a garden um, let alone like if we want to establish a, a food forest, you know, <laughs> which has been has been my dream for years. Um, hello, hello Webster, it's nice, nice to see you um, coming on here and <laughs> watching this video. Um, thank you, nice to see you. Um, so, uh, yeah, hopefully this year we'll have our own garden if we manage to... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We've been looking at houses, but yeah, it's pretty. The houses in the, in the properties, not just the houses, because it's not about the house. It's about the garden mostly. Um, we're after. Uh, properties are very expensive in the UK. Like, they're very expensive. And it's not just they're expensive. It's very difficult to find a property that has a big garden or like space for gardening many of them have so many rooms which they're not that necessary for us personally we just need you know you know basic stuff kitchen bedroom room for an office or two and yeah it's just for a library <laughs> but uh, in general we want a big plot of land so fingers crossed this is the year we may manage to do that and because of that I mean, I've been saving some seeds, I mean, saving, gathering seeds from various places in the last few years. And I've been sending some of those seeds to, to people with my books as well. Um, hopefully you like them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was thinking to do, because I have some books from the market, uh, from the farmer's market I did uh, like two weeks ago. I was thinking to do like uh, an exchange, you know. So, <laughs> basically, I have books. Maybe you are a grower and have seeds saved from your own garden. So I was thinking it would be nice to do this sort of exchange. My book costs, um, the hardcover edition costs, costs 
20 pounds the ebook i think is 4.99 obviously i would encourage you to to buy the hardcover because it's more sturdy it's better to see for children um, it has the activity section um don't think i'm making more money on the hardcover i'm actually making well if i sell them directly i am but if i'm not if i'm selling them through amazon i'm not i'm making more money from the ebook you know in case you're curious um but yeah so i was thinking if you're interested and especially if you live in the uk because if you live in other countries there's the issue with shipping and that adds to the cost and maybe some some countries don't allow like see sending seeds through the mail or other things like that and it will make things more complicated but if you're essentially if you're in the uk i i would love to do this exchange with you i have some seeds like cornflower um cornflower seeds sunflower i have some fluffy cute looking sunflowers that i'm looking to to grow in the garden they look really nice online on the picture but and apparently the bees love them um i have um some which are perennial and they're called like the, the electric daisy which is a toothache plant it's very interesting um what else do i have i have some few other seeds but yeah these are the ones i have oh yeah i have cucumber and tomato recently from my parents they sent me some um but yeah these are basically the seeds that i have so if you if you're a grower and you uh, you know i'm looking for perennial plants uh, perennial seeds sorry um i i would consider also exchanging with fruit trees but because we don't have our garden or property yet we don't know exactly if we'll have it i can't risk like exchanging books with, uh, with trees because i don't want to you know damage the trees with seeds i can keep them for another year two years until we actually move you know in case things don't go well um we've been meaning to move for several years but it's always something pandemic violence whatever things are happening in the world so um yeah i think this is a very long video i'm not sure um how long i've been speaking but hopefully you'll find this video useful um again if you have any questions please let them let me know you can either direct message me privately or you can leave comments on this video and i'm more than willing to to answer you can find more details in the description of my uh, instagram account you can find my youtube channel and there there's links to my website um to my buy me coffee uh, oh Another thing I, I've been thinking about doing recently more is uh, ACMR videos. There's some of you who like my voice apparently when I do ACMR video, which for me is very strange because I'm not such a fan of my voice. But when I do ACMR videos, I think it's a bit more pleasant. So I, I'm going to try and do more. I was planning to do one yesterday, but it was construction noise yet again the building where i live so i couldn't do it and then in the evening there was no construction noise but i was just like mm, too, i'm not really feeling it and you know when i'm doing these videos i want to be in the nice mood calm relax so you know i'm not doing the videos to send anxiety for other people i want to make them make you relaxed so maybe tomorrow we'll do another maybe we'll do do one i'll just be reading from uh, fiction books, non-fiction books, I have some that I really want to share um, that I, I might do from Jonathan Drury's um, Around the World in 80 Plants his book, if, first book if you checked it out was Around the World in 80 Trees um, I have both copies, both signed copies and yeah, I might, I might read from that one in the next episode but that will be on my youtube channel probably so if you're not subscribed to it maybe check it out <laughs> come say hello there and yeah once again thank you so much um to those of you who have said really nice things about the book and about the smr videos it's very encouraging so yeah thank you so much i'm eagerly <laughs> uh, waiting for um for reviews to pop through um it's always 
always exciting to hear what people have to say <laughs> so yeah anyway um i won't keep you any longer thank you so much for joining this uh, live <laughs> and have a lovely day let's see if i remember how to close this <laughs> bye